About two months ago, I was thinking about the time Yukari mentioned the Nintendo DS in one of the Toho stories. Yes, that actually happened. So then I googled Toho DS and... What? There was a Toho homebrew for the Nintendo DS? Six stages? A dual screen setup? And more! I was intrigued. So now, all that was left for me to do was to download it and emulate, right? Well, uh... The game was not primarily designed for emulation, and in order to compile a build that would have actually ran in an emulator, I would have needed to download some homebrew tools from 2009 and to mess around with the game's code. Believe me, I tried, but eventually, I gave up. So, the next logical step? Buy a DS flashcart. If you don't know, DS flashcarts let you load games onto them and play them on your system. You can play things like newer Super Mario Bros. DS, and of course, Toho DS. So, I waited about a week for the flashcard to ship, messed around to figure out how to set up the SD card properly for three days, and so finally, Toho DS was ready. There's just, uh, one problem. I, unfortunately, do not have access to a DS capture card. So, I had to record the gameplay like it was 2008. But still, as far as I'm aware, there is no complete overview of this game available on YouTube. So please, enjoy this look back at a unique piece of Toho history. Toho DS released in 2009 and features content spanning from Toho 1, yes, I mean 1, all the way to Toho 11. On the main menu, you see Play, Practice, Options, and... Wi-Fi? Unfortunately, Wi-Fi doesn't work anymore, but Toho DS was originally set up as a platform. It made use of Lua scripting that programmers could modify, and then they could post their very own Toho DS games online. The idea was that you could download them through this Wi-Fi connection. It's a super novel concept that was way ahead of its time. The actual game itself plays pretty similarly to a standard Toho game, with the biggest difference being the dual screen setup. This setup is both a blessing and a curse. It's cool in that thanks to the DS's verticality, you can see just as much, if not more, of the game field compared to playing Toho on a computer. It's like how Sonic Rush successfully used verticality to mitigate screen crunch. The downside, though, going in between screens is kind of a nightmare. There's a dead zone between the DS's two screens, so the player and the bullets don't exactly sync up. With Toe's precision, this is a pretty big problem, and it meant that I generally stayed towards the bottom of the screen. Dodging bullets isn't bad, though, and besides that one major gripe, the game's still pretty fun. Stage 1's music uses Cinderella Cage, the Stage 5 theme from Toho 8. In fact, every stage uses Cinderella Cage from Toho 8 as the stage theme. All the songs are MIDI optimized to be used for the DS, and they all sound nice. It reminds me of how Sonic Colors and Puyo Puyo sounded different from the home console versions on the DS, but still sounded good. Stage 1 is a traditional Danmaku affair, and ends with a fight against Cerno. I'm happy to report that Cerno's dead spot is here and accounted for. She goes down pretty easily. Stage 2 happens next, and is slightly harder. And the boss is... Jen! And... Wow, this song actually translates really well to the DS. In fact, any song involving pianos pretty much sounds like how it did on computers. Chen goes down about as easily as her original fight, and now we move to Stage 3. Stage 3 is where the game starts to ramp up in difficulty, with a ton more bullets being fired at the player. With some dodging and bombs though, it's no biggie. The boss here is... Wait a second. An OC fusion between Flandre and Marissa. Flandrissa? Oh my god, that's amazing. 
I don't think anything else here sums up the era of Toho this was made quite as nicely as this. To be fair though, the fight is pretty interesting. It's cool to see a fusion between the two Fusee's spell cards, but it is a bit weird that Flandre, in some shape or form, is only the stage 3 boss. Well, we take them down, and then we move on to stage 4. Stage 4 is... almost non-existent. We then move to the boss fight, Tailey. You only really fought her as an actual boss in Toho 9, and even then, it was a bit different. Between the Fusion OC, Tailey, and the final boss that you will definitely not be able to guess, it's nice to see that this game is creative with its boss choices. The fight with Tailey is pretty fun, and forces you to move around the screen quite a bit. After a while, though, you can take her down and move on to the next stage. Stage 5 also almost doesn't exist. The fight is against... Moku? Okay. This is by far the easiest fight you will ever have with Moku, even including the fighting games. I'd compare its difficulty to a stage 3 boss in a normal Toho game. The entire game in general is balanced to be easier than traditional Toho games, likely because of the dead zone in the middle of the screen. But, same old song and dance, you take down Moku, and move to the final stage. Stage 6 is where I lost all my lives and got a game over. But unlike Mainline Toho, you can practice on any stage at any time. So I simply went back to stage 6 in the practice menu. Stage 6 is primarily made of ghosts from the PC-98 games. Rather than shooting to destroy them, a lot of the ghosts you actually have to dodge, as if they're a giant bullet. You do get sections where you fight the ghosts though, like a Toho mini-boss. It's a very unique stage, but it isn't bad at all. It's pretty cool to see a stage this untraditional. The structure makes the stage feel like a weird fever dream, and the final boss caps off this tone pretty well. The Legendary. You, you cow. The main menu theme is a remix of Order of Life, so funnily enough, this fight was actually foreshadowed. Like Moku, the Yu Cow fight is an easier version of her fight from the original game. Well, not an easier version of Yu Cow, but you you know what I mean. So you dodge, you bomb, and yep, that was Toho DS. Toho DS is an interesting piece of Toho history. It very much feels in place with the Dojin culture that Toho fostered, and is also completely legal. There's nothing stopping you from loading this game onto your own DS flash cart or through 3DS homebrew. It's not a Toho game that will blow your mind, not by any means, but it's still a cool showcase of both the Nintendo DS and the dedication that Toho fans have.